Hello everyone, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. So I've actually had this on my mind for a very long time, but there are a few things that are becoming bigger and bigger problems as Genshin Impact grows. A few things that are actively ruining the experience for new players, and ultimately really need to be fixed. And while I love Genshin Impact and it's still one of my absolute favorite games, I feel as though these problems really need to be addressed, otherwise it'll seriously start affecting the longevity of Genshin Impact's popularity. So in order to bring these problems to light so that hopefully they can be changed in the future, we're going to be talking about my top 3 reasons why why Genshin Impact isn't so new player friendly. If you are a new player, then I obviously recommend watching the whole video just so that you know what you're up against, but at the very least you should at least watch my reason number 3, since it might actually influence who you decide to pull for, so that you can enjoy the game no matter where you are in the game. If you do end up finding this video helpful at all, please feel free to leave me a like and comment down below, and if you want to see more Genshin Impact content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. But with all that out of the way, let's get into the video. So let's go ahead and start with reason number 3. It really sucks that new players struggle to participate in events. For veteran players, or players that have been playing for at least a few months, this isn't a huge issue, and is probably something that you don't even notice. However, every single event in Genshin Impact actually has requirements that you need to fulfill in order to play them. Some of them are very arbitrary and very easy to fulfill, for example, level up to AR-10 and complete part of Mondstadt's story quest. However, on the exact opposite end of the spectrum, events could also require you to be well over AR-30 and have already completed parts of Inazuma. Players that have been playing for a while know that this could take a very long time to actually do. For casual players, this could take a few weeks to over a month, and even if you're super dedicated, it could take a couple days, or possibly over a week in order to get to that point. Meaning that if you want to participate in the event, you have to speed through all of the story content in order to get there, and run the risk of burning yourself out. The key and main issue here is that all of these events are pretty much limited, meaning that they're either a one and done and you'll never get to play that event again, or in some cases it may come back but not for a few months. And and even when it does come back, the rewards won't be the same and you can't pick up the rewards that you missed. This sets up quite the conundrum, because do you just ignore the new event so that you can go at your own pace but then still feel like you're missing out? Or do you blast through as much content as possible to reach the event so that you can get all the rewards, but not really enjoy the gameplay or the story along the way? In my opinion, both of these options pretty much suck. However, is there really anything that can be done about it considering how Genshin Impact is designed? Genshin Impact's content and map are unlocking stage by stage. You start out in Mondstadt, you make your way over to Liyue, and from there you make your way to Inazuma, and so on and so forth. So obviously, if an event is taking place in an area that is later on in the game's story, it does make sense that players need to make it to that area first. However, the main issue is that this problem is actually going to continue to grow as Genshin Impact grows. Right now, it's not the biggest of deals because we only have three regions. However, we all already know that there's going to be at least seven regions by the end of Genshin Impact's lifespan. Events in Mondstadt Mondstadt and Liyue aren't going to be a problem, and some can argue that Inazuma isn't that bad either. But when we start having to go all the way to Sumeru, Fontaine, Natlan, and eventually even Shneznaya, I honestly start to get anxiety just thinking about new players having to speedrun through that much content just to play a simple event. Essentially, the game ends up punishing you just because you didn't start out when the game first launched. However, to be fair, this isn't just a problem that Genshin Impact deals with. In fact, almost all mobile gacha games do have this problem. This is because everything comes in seasons and limited events, so that they can keep players coming back for more, making sure that you're constantly logging in and playing the game as much as possible. And while this is nice to a degree since it does keep the game fresh, at the same time for casual players, players that don't have a lot of time to play, or players that started later on in Genshin Impact's life cycle, it just sucks to miss out. And that actually brings us to our second reason. You might have already missed out. Okay, you see this man right here, the horrible man that almost killed you in Inazuma? Did you know that we already met him? Do you know that Mona identified him as a very dangerous person and that we had to get away at all costs? Do you know that he figured out secrets of the universe that not many characters in this game know about? A discovery that can have monumental repercussions on the rest of the game's storyline? Oh, you don't? You didn't- you didn't play back in version 1.1? Oh well, the that's too bad. Guess you gotta go look it up on YouTube, because it's no longer in the game's files. Or at least it's not available for you to play. And while you're at it, you might as well look up the original Dragon Spine story, the very first time that we went to the Golden Apple Archipelago, and the time we helped our little paper friend with amnesia. And while I would say that only the Unreconciled Star event, with Mona, Fischl, and Scaramouche was the most important out of all of these, these are all still stories that new players can't experience in-game. This was because they were tied to limited events, and unfortunately there's no current way 
need to replay these story beats, meaning that if you miss them, you miss them, and unfortunately you'll never get the same experience that older players did. And in my opinion, that just flat out sucks. Looking up scenes and dialogue on YouTube isn't the same as actually playing it. And while not everyone plays Genshin Impact for its story, I still think that it's integral to the overall game experience. MiHoYo needs to add some way to revisit these events in the future, whether it's an event compendium, where you can go back and play past events, or by bringing back past events for new players, in conjunction with new events for older players. Or even if they can't manage that, they at least need to have a way for players to go back and experience those scenes even if they aren't able to get the rewards. Otherwise, they bring up things that happened in these past events, and new players are just gonna be like, huh, what? Who's that? When did we go there? Why is this person important? Why should I care about this? And the last thing I want them to do is have just a little bit of dialogue telling the viewer what happened in the past, because that's not the same as actually experiencing it. So whatever the case, I hope that MiHoYo can figure this out for new players. And one more thing before we move on to the last point, in the same vein as having already missed out, while I don't think that rewards are as important as missing out on story, there are a few items in the game that I do think are actually pretty bad to have missed. These being the free 4-star weapons that they give during certain events. While there are some that are fine if you miss them, there are others that are so unique that they can't really be replaced. For example, while Festering Desire is an extremely good weapon, and it's unique in the way that it does increase your skill damage, you can still technically replace it with a Favonius weapon or a Sacrificial weapon. You won't get the damage increase, but at least you're still getting the energy recharge. However, compare that to the second Dragon Spine weapon that we got, the Cinnabar Spindle. This weapon was tailor-made for Albedo, and is currently the only sword that scales off of defense that isn't a 3-star weapon. This 4-star weapon is so incredibly good on Albedo that it's actually his best in slot, outbeating every single 5 star. And if you played the whole vent and got all the rewards, then you actually managed to get it all the way up to refinement rank 5, making this weapon absolutely crucial for anyone that wants to maximize Albedo's total damage. But what if you want Albedo but you started playing after this event? Well then you're just out of luck. It's gone, it's over. Maybe they'll do something in the future, but as of recording, they have never ever brought back an event weapon. I know that this is to reward players that still play consistently and play every Every single event, but it also still feels like a punishment for those that started later on in the game. Every single guide that tells you how to build Albedo is going to tell you to use the Cinnabar Spindle, but if you're a new player that started playing after his event, you simply do not have access to it. And even if MiHoYo doesn't want to give away these weapons for free a second time, I think that at the very least they should be adding these weapons to the shop. Let players decide to use their Primos or Masterless Star Glitter in order to get these weapons. This way you still encourage players to play regularly so that they can get the weapon for free, but this way if they happen to miss the event for whatever reason, they can still have access to the weapon in some way. They already do this with character skins, so I don't see why they can't do this with the weapons as well. I don't know, some people may disagree with me on how important missing story beats or special limited items are, but I personally think that it is avoidable and something that MiHoYo does need to change in the future. Okay, and last but certainly not least, probably the most important thing that MiHoYo desperately needs to change is the fact that new characters characters from new regions are almost unplayable for new players. As I mentioned in my recent community post, I really wanted to make this video because Yai Miko is right around the corner and I know that a lot of people are very, very excited to get her. And if you're a veteran player or someone that's been playing long enough to get to Inazuma, I say go ahead and go for her. But if you are a newer player, there's something really important that you need to know. If you haven't already made it to Inazuma, it's going to be next to impossible to level her up, let alone level up her talents or any weapons from Inazuma. This is because ascension materials and talent upgrade materials are almost always region locked. And even if some of their materials are available in other regions, new characters almost always use new boss drops, meaning that even if you did collect everything else, if you can't get those boss drops, you still can't level up the character. For example, let's use a character that was just released. Shinha is a Liyue character, meaning that the majority of her ascension materials were available in Liyue. However, in order to level her up past a certain level threshold, and to level up her talents past level 6, you had to make your way all the way to Inazuma, make your way to Enkonomia to fight the new bishops, and in order to get her talent levels over 6 you had to beat part of the main storyline so that you could fight and defeat La Signora. So essentially, if you weren't already at the end game of Genshin Impact currently, you couldn't even use this character to her full potential. Okay, but what about the upcoming character Yai Miko? Ultimately, you're gonna find yourself in a very similar situation if you're a new player. Let's break down absolutely everything that you would have to do in order
order to finally get her up to level 90 and max out her talent levels. Okay, strike that. Let's not even get her up to level 90. Let's just worry about getting her above level 50. And while we're at it, let's try to get her talent levels above level 2 or 3 aka the bare minimum to make a character playable. Let's say that you're pretty new to the game, like you're AR-15. This means that you would have to beat the entirety of the Monster Archon quests, meaning you'll have to fight and defeat Andreas, and resolve the Storm Terror Crisis. From there, you would have to make your way over to Liyue, discover what happened to Rex Lapis, fight and defeat Child, and ultimately resolve everything at the Jade Chamber. After beating Monster in Liyue, you can finally make your way over to Inazuma, but only if your AR is above level 30. Once you raise your adventure rank to 30, you can finally make your way over to Inazuma. Only then, after doing everything that I mentioned prior, can you begin to start farming for her. And while some items might be easy enough to start farming right off the bat, such as talent levels so you can finally get her talents above level 2 or 3, woohoo, the boss drops you need are an entirely other story. Since Yae is coming right after Shin Ho, we can assume that she's going to use the same boss drops. Meaning to even get to the Geo Bishop boss fight, you're going to have to find and make your way over to Watsutsumi Island, and once there, you'll have to complete an entire story quest quest so that you can enter Enkonomia. This quest will probably take you a few hours depending on how thoroughly you play through it. However, when you do finally finish it, you'll be able to enter Enkonomia. However, once you finally make it to Enkonomia where the bosses are located, you can't just run up to the bosses and start fighting them. No, instead you have to make your way through all of Enkonomia, completing yet another quest line. This quest is significantly shorter, so you should be able to finish it within 1-2 to two hours if you don't dilly-dally. Then and only then will you finally be able to fight those new bishops and finally get Yae Miko over level 40 or 50. And if you want to get her all the way up to level 90, you're going to have to farm for 46 boss drops if you want to finally max her out. And keep in mind that these bosses are significantly harder than anything that you would find in the beginning of the game. And if you think you're done there, not quite. Because in order to level up her talents past level 6, you're going to have to fight the new weekly boss that's probably coming out in 2.5. And unlike other weekly bosses like Devalin, Andreas, Child, and even Ejdaha now, like Lost Signora, this boss is sure to be a little bit harder than anything that we've faced before. Meaning to get their talent levels above level 6, you have to put in twice the amount of effort that you would for a previous character. Oh oh oh, and I completely forgot, you still have to get artifacts! Sure, you might be able to get away with some artifacts from another region, but if Yai does end up using something like the Emblem of Severed Fate, you can only start farming that in Inazuma. And as any veteran player will tell you, farming for artifact sets, especially 4-piece sets, is a whole other beast in and of itself. And if you finally made it to this point, then great, you finally maxed out Yai Miko. But as a new player, was it worth blasting through the grand majority of all of the content in the game, just so that you could play a single character that you really wanted from the very beginning? I certainly wouldn't think so. Obviously, every person's going to feel differently about this, but I would personally never recommend a new player go for a new character, because I know that if they aren't willing to grind through all of that content in order to level that character up, that ultimately that new character that they just spent all their primos on is just going to sit in their inventory. And the biggest issue that I have with this is that this problem is only going to grow and grow and grow as Genshin Impact progresses forward. It's starting to get bad just with Inazuma characters, but keep in mind that Sumeru is right around the corner, meaning that when Sumeru characters finally start dropping, you're going to have to do everything that I mentioned prior, and then whatever you have to do in Sumeru. And again, it's only going to get worse. This is going to happen with Fontaine, this is going to happen with Natlan, this is going to happen with Shnejnaya, and what whatever regions that they decide to add to Genshin Impact. And while this will never be a problem for players like me who constantly keep up with the game, if you for whatever reason put down the game or start this game late, you'll never be able to just pick it up and enjoy the newest character. And I don't know about you guys, but I think that that is a huge, huge design flaw. Many players pick up Genshin Impact for specific characters, and if you're new and you realize that you can't even play that character or that you wasted your primos on a character, many people are just going to say that it's not worth it and and put down the game altogether. I'm not sure what miHoYo can do in order to make this less of a problem. Perhaps they can finally make it so that we can transform any boss drop into any other boss drop, or any ascension material into any other ascension material, but something tells me that they're very hesitant to do this since they know that older players will definitely take advantage of this. But honestly, what's the alternative? Because if they don't implement something like this into the game soon, I think that most new players are just going to get extremely frustrated, say that it's not worth it, and ultimately put down Genshin Impact in favor 
of a different game. And that's really sad. Like I said, I absolutely love Genshin Impact and I want people to be able to enjoy it no matter when they start playing. So hopefully MiHoYo will hear people's complaints about this and take the appropriate steps in order to fix this problem before it gets out of hand. But I don't know, that's pretty much all that I have to say on this for now. But what do you guys think about these three major problems that I brought up? Are they as big of a deal as I'm making them out to be, or do you think that they're really not that big of a deal? Also, if you did end up finding this video to be informative or helpful, please feel free to leave me a like down below. And if you want to see more Genshin Impact content from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. We're currently on our way to 25,000 subscribers, and I'd love to have you along for the ride. But that's all for now, so until next time, best wishes. Bye.